The mayor of the city of Jackson, Daniel Mahoney. Hey, Mayor, welcome to the show. Good afternoon. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Now, I uh, introduced you uh, as Daniel J. Mahoney, and that's uh, typically how you start your uh, speeches. Uh, you <laughs> tell everyone what J stands for, and places I've been, J stands for different things. Yeah. Yeah, but in reality, it stands for... The, uh, well, if you ask my mom, <laughs> the J stands for Jermaine. Okay. Yes. Well, it could stand for Jackson. It, it, I mean, at times it does. it does. At times it does. It just depends on the, depends on the day. Well, two of the events where you spoke were the Martin Luther King events that our community has, the Chamber's uh, Diversity Breakfast mm -hmm. and the Jackson College MLK uh, celebration. Yes. I think in both cases, records were sent with, uh, sat with attendance. Yeah. You know, it was, uh, it was nice to see uh, both events uh, and participate in uh, in total all three events of the weekend I mean we had uh, the the weekend kicked off um, very strong with the chamber breakfast uh, got to introduce someone who I consider a mentor a friend a big brother uh, mr. John Willis and he had his his family with him uh, Jay and Kyrie Willis it was I mean that was powerful the word that they brought was powerful uh, and then he turned right around and sung a song that he wrote with his family, with the rest of his family, his sisters and his uh, his his wife and uh, his niece. That was, you know, that was just powerful to me to see that uh, so phenomenal turnout for that event. Uh, a lot of shakers and movers from around the community of Jackson in support of the Chambers uh, MLK Diversity Breakfast, which was great to see everybody come out. It was it was a nice turnout. We had, and there was a City of Jackson table, uh, mm -hmm. city represented, uh, and a sponsor as well, the city uh, presenting sponsor of the Willis family yes. uh, speakers. And they, here they are singing, and I've known that John and his sisters are incredible singers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, they did a phenomenal job all the way around. Yep. Great message. Yeah. I uh, think great they're, event. They're, there's some uh, there weren't dry eyes in the house that's morning. right that's yeah. right and then they had Larry Sumner playing for him and then uh, of course they had uh, the community's pastor Pastor Hines close it down for the for the day that was that, that was a nice send-off message that he brought it really was and then the uh, the next day everyone uh, wanted to honor Dr. King at the Jackson College uh, celebration that's right and you uh, gave a, a little uh, welcoming address there as well. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, it's nice when I can wear uh, both hats, when I can uh, be present somewhere, uh, both representing, um, you know, my seat as the mayor of the city um, of Jackson. And also I work at Jackson College. So, I mean, that event is always special. I'm uh, on the planning committee that helps with planning the event. Mm -hmm. um, and it's always that fine line of, okay, well, you know, you are the mayor. Uh, we got to have you speak as well, you know. So I look forward to that event also. You know, my message was directly uh, to the students and the young people who were in the room, uh, just trying to bring a message directly from one of Martin Luther King's speeches. Like one of the, every year what I do, Bart, is I dig deeper into one of his messages from one of his speeches. And this year, the speech that I dug deeper into was what's in your life's blueprint. Uh, so I, you know, read what he said is the, the top three things that you should have in your life's blueprint when you're asking yourself, what's in my life's blueprint and looking forward to what's next. The keynote speaker was pretty good. It was a phenomenal keynote speaker. Um, and again, uh, another person who I consider a mentor, a friend and a big brother was honored uh, with the MLK Medal of Ser uh, Service of Honor uh, from Jackson College, uh, Mr. Anthony Parker. Uh, was honored at the event with that medal, which was phenomenal. I mean, he's just done so many great things and uh, volunteered and committed so much time giving back to the community of Jackson. It's nice to see people be given the flowers when they're due. Yeah, and he's pretty humble because um, his accomplishments, uh, he barely scratched the surface. And early in his introduction, you, you learn something new about every time I I am exposed to 
Anthony, I hear new things about him. I had no idea right. he, he, he did. Yep. But he started a lot of things uh, and still to this day is involved with, with those in, in our community. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, of course, uh, Kelly uh, Crum did a great job oh, yeah. uh, putting this show on. Yep. Uh, and Angela Tompkins, the uh, guest speaker, VP of uh, DEI at um, oh, Consumers, right. Consumers. Yeah, it was just a great lineup. Yeah. yeah, great way to start the year. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Great lineup. And then Monday, we had the MLK mm -hmm. event with the NAACP. Yeah. Uh, which was man, it was uh, it was very very powerful. So that event uh, is the longest standing MLK event in the city. Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to encourage to see more people come out to that event. It's a free event, mm -hmm. um, and it had good attendance, but it could have had better attendance. Uh, but it was it was nice. It was a nice event as well. We had uh, Dr. Ken Harris was the keynote speaker, who was the uh, president and CEO of the Michigan Black Chamber of Commerce, as well as the uh, National Negro Business League, mm -hmm. um, oldest chamber of commerce in the United States of America. Oh, wow. Uh, so that was, that was powerful to have him in the building and um, kind of talk about black business and encouraging and increasing and supporting black business uh, in a community like Jackson and uh, looking forward to doing some further work with him as well. All right, so next year we'll get the word out for that event as yes, well. Yes, indeed. It's the, uh, the triple, uh, triple header of uh, MLK events our community uh, has. I think uh, the predecessor in your office, uh, Derek Dobies, started a, a tradition of the state of the city. Yes. Uh, are you going to do that this year? Uh, yeah, we did the state of the city last year um, and definitely plan to do it again this year. Uh, in fact, I'm already in planning mode for that. Um, it's like the first thing I thought about as the year turned over, what have we accomplished thus far? Uh, I mean, and this, you know, when you start thinking about what can you get done in one year's time, and you're like, man, that's not a lot of time because you blink and one year has already passed. And what can you get done within that time? And as I reflected on the 12 months and what we did month over month, I look back, I was pretty impressed myself to see how much stuff we actually got done from January to January. Uh, so in one year's time, we have a lot to celebrate. Uh, we still have a ton of work left to do. Mm -hmm. um, and it's time to start setting some new goals and looking forward for Jackson. Uh, and start discussing what the future of Jackson looks like and what we want it to look like. And what do we have to do to get there? Uh, and to me, that's what the state of the city is for. Um, and it's, it's really nice to see that when some of the goals that you look to achieve for your community align with what the state's trying to do and also aligns with what the U.S. government is trying to do. Uh, because what that means is that when you're in alignment with all of those same initiatives, that makes it that much easier for us as a community to pull in those state and federal resources to make sure that our projects get seen through. Uh, so I'm really, really excited. Well, we'll look forward to the state of the city. But one of those things um, that uh, the federal, state, and uh, city government are all aligned on is providing more affordable housing, more, yes. more comfortable, uh, decent housing um, for the community. And um, with that, uh, let's talk about the Hayes Project because uh, today we have the developers from uh, Milwaukee mm -hmm. who are here in Jackson right now who have already made some commitments about the Hayes. What's uh, what's going on? So Jay Jeffers group is here in town. Um, actually, I will be meeting with them uh, over across the street at City Hall um, in, in about an hour. Uh, myself and city manager will sit down with them. Uh, probably get a preview of an update of where things are on their end uh, as far as the project goes. And then tomorrow they'll be at our city council meeting to discuss with city council the same exact thing, where things are. Um, I've heard nothing but good things, nothing but good things about getting this project going. So I'm super excited to find out directly from them exactly where we are. Yeah, and I know um, since they um, first, and I think they're gonna be asking for an extension um, of their uh, development agreement or whatever the, the deal is that they have, because it was for a set period of time. But um, I think one of the things that's changed is what that building's gonna look like in terms of 
uh, what the occupancy is, and it sounds like they're more they're leaning more toward uh, apartments rather than condos, and that there will be some office space and uh, restaurant and uh, ballrooms and, and uh, retail all, all in the same building. Yep, yep. Sounds like you know the same thing I know so mm -hmm. far. Uh, but I'm, I'm, again, I'm really looking forward to hearing it directly from them exactly where things are. Um, really happy to see that they took the time out not to send in an update, but to actually travel here in person to talk to us directly to provide an update. And uh, Housing for the Homeless, that's another um, initiative of yours, and I think the council as well mm -hmm. have, have made some um, progress toward uh, finding some at least temporary s solutions. What, what is the, tell us a little bit about, the, uh, I guess, the portable housing units that um, you're, you're... So I, I think what you're asking about right now is the temporary uh, emergency shelters mm -hmm. that we uh, have purchased. It's uh, from a site called pallet.com uh, or something like that. I can't remember the exact site. Um, so here's, here's the thing. Uh, we, we can all acknowledge that there's a homelessness issue in the city of Jackson, mm -hmm. in our area in general, there are homeless people mm -hmm. who need help. And for me, I feel like it is not our responsibility to solve the issue, but it is our responsibility as city government to do what we can to help with the, with the issue. Mm -hmm. So then we have to start asking, what is it we can do? So we looked at a number of things. And to me, this is kind of a three phase project that we have to look at. We have to look at what can we do right now to get people off of the street, out of homelessness temporarily, so that we don't have people dying on the streets of Jackson from being in inclement weather. Then we have to look at a short, long-term goal of what we can do to temporarily house people who are homeless and get them into somewhere for a little bit longer because the hotel expenses are extremely high and it's not a sustainable model for temporary housing for people. So that's kind of phase two. Phase three is something a little bit longer term that has additional wraparound services and hopefully partnering with some of the organizations that exist in our community that are already working in the space, that are already doing the work, that just need a little bit more capacity, that lead a, need a little bit more help, and then figuring out what type of role the city can play to support that help that they need. So that is really kind of how I look at it. It's kind of a three-phase project. Right now we're in phase one, but phase one is nearing an end. We allocated a certain dollar amount towards putting people in hotels. We've done that. Residents in Actions uh, uh, group has done exceedingly and abundantly over what our expectations were, which is great. Mm -hmm. But again, those dollars are only going to stretch so long before we have to say, what are we going to do? We've got X number of people who we're temporarily housing in hotels that are still, uh, uh, still homeless because we've got a housing shortage or there's still issues with those families that they have not found permanent st uh, stable housing. So now what are we gonna do? We have to look to trans, uh, transition to a next phase. Those pallet shelters are part of a next phase. So uh, again, this isn't just my project, this is council's project, this is the city's project. Uh, city manager sees wisdom in going in this direction. Uh, so does council from conversations that we've had see wisdom in going in this direction because there's no one solve for every homeless issue. There are individuals who need that personal individualized space to me that's where in the puzzle of figuring out what the city can do in that puzzle of figuring that out those pallet shelters fit in a very critical space of what happens when you have an individual who's not comfortable due to anxiety due to whatever uh, 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 mental health situations they have going on what happens when that individual is not comfortable being in a group setting mm -hmm. do we just say well we don't have anything to accommodate for you to me that's a part of that pallet shelter housing giving that person an individual space when i spoke to a person who i know personally that was homeless for over two years he said mayor mahoney 
when I was homeless during that two years, the most important thing to me was my belongings because it's all I had. Mm -hmm. A lot of places that you go to that will provide you shelter um, in the form of a homeless shelter are not going to allow you to bring in all of your belongings. And no matter how minuscule we think those items are to a person, because all we see is a grocery cart basket full of stuff. Mm -hmm. That is all that person may have. And if they can't take it with them, they may not want to go into a group setting because they can't take their only possessions with them. Sure. Or if they have animals or whatever the case may be. And I think this is all a part of a whole puzzle that we're trying to uh, piece together. And it's going to take a lot of help from the organizations and the people in this community who care. Because I know there's a lot of them. And we may not be going the traditional route, which is to say, okay, we got dollars, come get these dollars, the people who are doing the work. No, this is saying we want a collaborative effort because we want a voice at the table as well to be able to say, here's a direction that we think we can go that will be supportive of bringing homelessness to uh, at least a reduced amount. We're not saying that we're going to solve it and bring it to zero, but I think we can take a, a, a pretty significant chunk out of our homeless population with the direction that we plan to go. All right. Well, we appreciate all the updates. Absolutely. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you for having me. The mayor of the city of Jackson, Daniel Mahoney. Stay with us.